One of those Republicans will be on that debate stage is Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, he is kind enough to join us right now. Vivek, good to have you back. It's good to see you. Let me ask you a little bit about uh, these uh, Georgia indictments against uh, the, the former president. You call them political persecutions. Explain. Look, Neil, I can't think we look at these indictments without the context of three other separate indictments, several of which came in the last four months alone. These are four different indictments in the middle of an election. I think it sets an awful precedent in our country for the ruling party, the party in power, to use police force to indict its political opponents in the middle of an election. And I say this as somebody who now, in some of the recent polls, I'm polling at second in this race, third overall. It would be a lot easier for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition, but that is not how I want to win. The way we win elections in this country, at least the way it should be, is that we convince the voters of this country of our vision and what we stand for. And that's why I've said that I would pardon, at least for the federal crimes, I would pardon Donald Trump to help move this nation forward. I am focused, for example, on your economic message. That's what we actually need to be talking more about, less about these politicized indictments that have distracted us from the fundamental issue. That's the fault of the Biden DOJ and a lot of the Democrat prosecutors across this country. Instead of explaining why Bidenomics is actually a farce, it is a failure with actual more job openings in this country than there are people looking for work. Price increases that are indeed permanent when wages have not gone up over the same period. That is how we're going to win this election in a landslide. That's what I want us talking about. But I will be unabashed about standing on the side of principle when I say, yes, these prosecutions are wrong. But um, I, I, I can understand that. But there are 91 criminal charges in all, Vivek, as you're aware, over four criminal cases. They, they can't all be politicized, can they? I mean, there's something that the former president must have done in any one of these that struck you as wrong, if not illegal. I think, Neil, just because the government has brought a case, if we're going to be a culture that now starts to say there must be something wrong, if the government has charged 91 counts, I think that's a, gov that's a people of sheep. And when the people behave like sheep, that breeds a government of wolves. Well, you don't think that's there's the anything, reality. anything so, no, in I this am case, Vivek, you don't think there's anything in this case that, that shows or even strongly hints of the former president trying to reverse that Georgia, that Georgia contest? Neil, you know, I've had this conversation before. There is a difference between a bad judgment and an illegal act. And I view this indictment in the context of, as you put it, three other independent indictments. The first one beginning in New York for a novel election and, and campaign contribution theory to one that has a novel theory of in, interpreting the Presidential Records Act to a novel theory of attorney-client relationships. When you have a series of novel legal theories that are used to indict a prior U.S. president and a sitting candidate in the middle of an election, I just don't think that's good for the country. I'm in this to lead our nation forward, not to be a political commentator or legal analyst on a series of legal cases. But what I will say as a candidate in this race is that I do not think it is good for our country to set this precedent. No, I, my I focus understand that, is but on reuniting is, this country, is, on leading us forward, doing, Vivek, and I'm, that's going to make I'm, my job more difficult. I understand. But when you have the Republican governor of Georgia uh, who has said that this report is irrefutable, and that, that this was an attempt at voter fraud uh, that was scorching. Uh, and, and you have others who've taken similar views, including the Secretary of State, they're a Republican, who said that Donald Trump went too far. Uh, wouldn't you put your trust, or at least your instincts, in those guys, Republicans, who said that this has been well examined, aggressively examined, and there was nothing to it? Neil, I have one question in my mind. I'm running to be our next president. I ask, what is in the interest of this nation? Do I believe that these prosecutors or these elected officials or these federal prosecutors are advancing the interests of this nation when they're bringing this unprecedented indictment, not one time, but now four times over? No, I think our country is worse off because of this politicization. Would I have made different decisions than Donald Trump did? 
Absolutely, I would have. I will remind you that I'm running for U.S. president in the same race that he is. Sure. But I think it is so important. This conversation that you and I are having are evidence enough of why this is a bad idea, because we're not talking about how we improve an economy. We're not but, talking but about how we ought to deal, revive right? our this national is, this identity. This is a big deal. And, and that's what this election really saying, should be about. But this is a big deal. We can't sort of minimize it or slough it aside of because it looks and like that's a exactly why I'm So let me ask you, when you talk about wanting to pardon Donald Trump for this, why? What would be what would be good about that if you became president of the United States to pardon him? I think the right answer for this country is to move forward, not to get into a weaponized tug of war between two political parties that then make a habit of using politicized police force against their political opponents. That is the stuff of banana republics. That is not what I want to see the United States of America devolve into. We should be able to disagree, disagree fiercely with one another but still sort out those disagreements through our civic process, culminating at the ballot box while every person's voice and vote counts equally. That is how we do things in the United States, not by eliminating our opponents using backdoor mechanisms. And so my reason, my chief reason for pardoning Donald Trump, at least of the federal offenses, which will be what's in my power, that includes the New York state offenses because they include the charge of an underlying federal offense as well. It will be to move this nation forward because my motivation in being U.S. President, Neil, is that I don't want to lead us to a national divorce. We're skating on thin ice as a country right now. That is a fact. I want to lead us to a national revival. That will take fortitude. And that is also why I'm saying even now, when it would be in my self-interest as a candidate to see Donald Trump eliminated, by some counts that would put me at number one in the Republican primary polls, that is not how I want to see it done which is why I've been so particular about being vocal on this, because I stand on the side of principle over partisan politics. All right, you also spoke recently about the idea of seeking out Donald Trump as someone you would use as an advisor. What, what did you mean by that? Well, I, I was asked about the cabinet members I would choose. Who would I choose other rivals of mine in the Republican primary field? The answer is I think several of them could be good cabinet members. And then I brought up Donald Trump because I don't think that he would serve in my cabinet, but the role I'd want to see him play is to, yes, be an advisor on understanding where he might have fallen short if he were to do it again on shutting down the administrative state, because that's the top of my domestic policy agenda. Shut down that administrative bureaucracy, shut down the deep state, reduce the federal employee headcount by over 75 percent. Turns out I've read the law, Neil. Civil service protections, they don't apply to mass layoffs. And mass layoffs are absolutely what I am bringing to the D.C. bureaucracy. But I would like to not have to learn those lessons all over again, but to build on where President Trump left off with the America First agenda. I am in this race to take that America First agenda to the next level. And yes, in a way that unites this country. And I will take everybody's help, including Trump's help, in making me successful in that role. All right. We'll follow it closely. Vivek, very good seeing you again. Thank you very much.